Hello, Suzanne. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. Welcome, everyone, to the Destination Simple podcast, where we talk about our own daily experiences with simple living so that you and we feel inspired to find our path to less stress and more joy. Uh, Suzanne Golden is an intentional living consultant, and I am a holistic personal chef. And we started chatting about Suzanne's intentional living blog um, on the regular for the last few years. And we just leave feeling more inspired to try to find that those key pieces to slowing down and having more joy and ease in our life. And so we decided to take that to the podcast and we're recording another one today. This is episode three of the Destination Simple podcast. That's Yay. right. Yay. Yes. Yay. Number three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And today we're going to be talking about intentional friendships and uh, how to bring intention to our friendships as maybe a better way to uh, to word that. I wrote a blog post recently uh, about, you know, how to be an intentional friend. So I've pulled a few highlights from that that we're going to chat about today and just kind of how we bring intention to um, our friendship and friends around us. So I'll just jump right in if you're ready to go. Yeah, go to town. Sounds good. Okay. How the people around us make us feel inside is essential to our well-being or can be detrimental to it. If you're with people who lift your spirit after you've been with them, you feel inspired, energized, or happy in general, these are good people for you. And friendships being a two-way street, one would hope that people you're with feel the same energy after spending time with you. On the other hand, if your gut clenches and churns at every, oh sorry, at even the thought of spending time with a certain person, they're not a good fit for you or your health, mental or physical. And it doesn't matter who they are. And if someone's got clenches and churns thinking about spending time with you, maybe you need to spend a little time reflecting on your impact on others. Sometimes I just say it like it is. <laughs> Let's consider how to be intentional when being friends so that others feel cared about after spending time with you. Do you think positively about this person when you're not with them? When a person crosses your mind, do you want to reach out to them to check in, even just to say, hey, I was thinking about you, how are you doing? Do you look forward to the next time you see them? This is a good person for your well-being. It's okay if some time lags between visits. Life is busy. Having a great friendship does not mean talking every day or even every week or sometimes every month. Making regular plans. The other side of that is there are some sets of friends where we make regular plans with. I see a few people for regular game day plans, dinner or lunch plans, and these get scheduled in. But usually even at that, they're like weeks apart. Texting friends. Some of my friendships are mostly over text and we might only see each other three or four times per year. They're still great friends. We're still connecting. New friends. This is where intentionality really plays a part. How often have you met someone through another friend or maybe a coworker or at an event? You have a great chat and maybe become Facebook friends and then say the line, we should meet for coffee. And the other person says, yeah, we should. And then no one makes the first move. So I'm here to tell you, it's okay to make the first move. Contact them, invite them for coffee, follow through. Show gratitude. Be appreciative of your friends and their time and let them know. After a visit, send a quick message stating it was great to visit with you today or yesterday. Looking forward to next time. Be your friend's biggest cheerleader. Women especially are so hard on other women. Cheer other women on. I encourage you, especially if they're your friends. Love their successes. Be happy for them. If you're jealous of your friend's opportunities or good fortunes, you're not being a good friend. Alternately, if you find you don't share your news with your friends because you're afraid of their reaction, these are relationships you need to spend some time evaluating. Friendships are two-way streets. It's not just about how people treat you. It's also about how you are with others. 
Being intentional about friendships takes effort, but if the person is uplifting for you, the effort should be a pleasure. If the effort feels heavy or dreaded, chances are this person isn't someone you want to be spending time with. Cut the people from your life who you're not life-giving, who are not life-giving for you, and focus your time on the people who give you energy and spread the love from within you to them too. That's what I have recorded for today. And if you want to read the full blog post, then we'll post a link to it in the show notes. Okay, hands up to people pleasers and recovering people pleasers, because <laughs> this has a lot to do, your blog on intentional friendship has a lot to do with that for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so Suzanne's blog on intentional friendship is what we're talking about today and she was just reading from it so if you're just tuning in that's that was the part where she's giving us a summary of what's in that blog and there are just so many pieces I want to dig into there um this it's really clear to me why this is such an important topic for our podcast um you know, when I think about intentionality and simple living, sometimes I don't think about the relationships part. You know, you sort of take for granted that the relationships in your life are there and or they're not there. And I focus more on I, other parts of my life, I guess. Um, but reading this blog when you sent it out, I realized it's very true how I had spent time in other phases of my life you know, wanting to be friends with everybody that I would meet, you know, and I've lived in various places and I've started fresh in places. And so I was really good at, you know, connecting with new people and, and being friendly everywhere and wanting to make new friends and tons of new connections. And that's where my value, like that I placed value on that. Um, but not enough value on the important key relationships for me, right? And I love what you're suggesting here about noticing what are those important relationships in my life? And am I feeding into them with intentionality? Are they feeding back to me? Um, and it's okay to not try to broadcast friendship with everybody you meet. There's not enough, for me, there's not enough time and energy to keep up. Exactly. all these connections, even if people are lovely, you know? Yep. And so it's kind of nice to start to distinguish in my mind, um, you know, which ones I'm going to focus on and few, but meaningful, right? And the other ones I can enjoy in passing, but um, it's probably true that neither myself or say this other imaginary person has the time to really feed into that friendship. Right. So if yeah. you start to notice how it's feeling, it starts to become more clear. Yeah. I can tell you, I can tell you want to say something. No, 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 no. That's okay. <laughs> no, I just following up on that. I think, I think we get very caught up and it probably starts from childhood or being in school and the whole, you know, popular crowd versus, you know, whatever crowd that you kind of fall into in school. And, but the idea was always, you know, that popular crowd, there's all these friends so many friends lots you know? of friends it's lots a, of friends success. or yeah. i'm very introverted so um connecting with people i find it um hard to kind of break into that initial i suck at small talk right so breaking into those initial conversations are are more difficult for me i'm a little bit more shy with new people you know once you get me comfortable i'm great but um so I think sometimes we get caught up, though, in thinking that we have to have lots of friends, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I, it took time, and I think just maturing and growing up and, and getting older to realize that we don't need lots of friends. I don't need lots of friends. I, I do have lots of friends. When I start counting them, I'm, sometimes I'm sh shocked. One day I made a list. I was like, oh, I have way more friends than I thought I did, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but <clears throat> I don't have a group of friends. All of my friends are, I've got a friend here, 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 here. We hang out with that couple. We hang out with that couple. But none of my friends know each other, right? Yeah. So 
So I spend a lot of time one-on-one -on -one with people, but I find being introverted, when you get me in a big group of people, I clam up and I don't talk and I don't say anything because I'm uncomfortable, right? Yeah. yeah. I want to be in that one-on-one -on -one conversation, yeah. you know, with, with a very small you know, group of people go for coffee with a friend, chat with a friend on the phone, you know, visit with, you know, you know, three people is comfortable. Yeah. Right? You yeah. know, four people if we're on a couple's thing, right? But it's, uh, yeah, I, it kind of took time for me to realize that it's not the quantity, of course, it's the quality of the friendships and putting energy into the few friendships that I have is has way more um i want to say payback but that's not quite the Re right. like it's but more rewarding more rewarding you know yeah to be developing those personal relationships those few fewer relationships the one-on-one -on -one relationships and putting the energy into those mm -hmm. has has been by far better then trying to figure out how i can have 20 friends come over for a backyard barbecue where the thought of that is like like okay you guys visit I'm going to my room to lie down because <laughs> I don't know how to handle you know 20 people here in my yeah yeah. Uh, yeah you know so I think the idea behind intentional relationships when I kind of wrote the blog post was I really wanted to focus on how do we bring quality to our relationships you know and mm -hmm. and not worry about the quantity it doesn't matter i have uh, most of my friends I, I i probably get confused thinking i don't have a ton of friends because we're so spaced out from one visit to the next visit right mm -hmm. um but when i think about it i see somebody pretty much every week yeah right if not two people or at least i'm connecting with a couple people every week so um and they're not the same people right so yeah. it feels like I have a very few friends but really it's just I have quite a number of friends but we're just very spaced out we're all busy we're all you know um I think you and I connect more now because we've started this podcast right yeah and so yeah. now we're kind of connecting on a much more regular basis because we kind of have this common goal of this you know this great thing that we're putting together and mm -hmm. we're super excited about it but prior to that I mean we didn't worry about if we connected every week or every two weeks or it no. was just kind of like hey you know and yeah. we've been hey, free for a call and then we yeah. would talk for like two and a half hours <laughs> exactly but it could be yeah. you know a month or two even between oh, where yeah. there might be some text message check-ins in between there, but to have a really long conversation, no, that's, you know, kind of spread out a yeah. bit, a bit yeah. more. So anyway, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of say a bit about the, yeah. the effort for quality. Yeah. I want, I want to come back to that actually, because that's almost the essence of this conversation. Yeah. Um, and I just want to say, we probably should have invited an introvert or an extrovert to this conversation. <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> this is going to be pretty introvert style conversation yeah. about friendships. Yeah. But um, I think it applies to anyone. You can bring the intention to the topic by just noticing how you feel about spending time in different settings with different people. So people who are more introverted, you might look at how you spend, how it feels one-on-one -on -one with somebody. Um, like you're saying, if you kind of get that, like, uh, I wish I didn't have to do this thing with the person. Maybe that's a, a relationship you want to reevaluate. Um, if you can't wait to spend time with them and you feel energized after, there's a sign that that's a relationship you can focus on, right? And start putting, you know, bringing more of the quality of the friendship forward. Um, and then for people who are looking at spending time with groups or doing activities with groups, same thing, like how, you know, a lot, I'm sure every week we're going to talk about how does it feel inside taking a pause to notice, how does it feel when I'm setting up to do this thing? Is it right for me? And this applies to relationships, friendships, groups of friends. Yep, exactly. 
And it's so great because as we were saying, sometimes you default and think you just need to say yes and spend time with whoever asks or whatever comes up. But being intentional means that you can notice and start to be more selective because your time might be limited, your energy might be limited, um, and it has an effect on your, you know, feeling good or not feeling as good. So it's a worthwhile thing to focus on with intention. Yeah. And that also makes me think of, um, you know, when we're considering the people that we're hanging out with and the energy that we are either giving, taking, receiving, you know, sometimes you've got this really great friend, but they tend to say, um, I want to word this so politely, uh, they tend to need more of your energy, right? Than, mm -hmm. than they give. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that's fine. You can, you know, be really great friends with, with people like this, but I find that you need to be aware if, if you have a friend who needs more than you can give. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you're thinking, well, we're friends and she's in need or, you know, I want to support her and I want to help her. And, but there always seems to be a crisis that you're supporting and helping and the next crisis you're supporting and helping. And, and you can have really great conversations and you can laugh a lot. You can get along great, but it's very focused on a, on a one person. Right. And you want to be aware if you're that person, are you the person that's really always kind of looking to your friends for, for help? And, but if you're on the receiving end of that, it's really important to set boundaries for yourself, for your own well being, and to add quality to that friendship. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's really important to kind of, you know, if you've got someone who cancels last minute often, right? Well, you put them on your calendar. You know, and right up to that time, you're like, so do I actually have plans? Do I not have plans? Do I have plans? Do I not have plans? You know, and it can be half an hour before and you get the text message. I'm not having a good day today. I'm not feeling well. I'm whatever, whatever, 10 excuses. And it's like, okay. So you have to kind of set yourself up too with some boundaries. Mm -hmm. It's okay. That's maybe the point I'm trying to make. It's okay. To set boundaries with, you might really like this person and you enjoy spending time with them, but if you feel like you're being taken advantage of or not being treated fairly, and it's not intentional on their part, right? This is kind of just how they, it's okay to set a boundary. You know, it's okay to say, you know what, I find that you actually cancel on me quite a bit. So the day before, we're going to confirm our plans. And you're either going to stick to them or you're going to tell me the day before that we're canceled. Because, you know, that way I don't have half an hour notice. I've got 24 hours notice, you know, yeah. if you're not going to be able to. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I'm talking that interesting. about patterns. Like it's interesting. Like, what, yes, this fits habitual or it's a yeah, pattern. Yeah, I'm talking about the habitual patterns, not the family yeah. emergency that comes up, you know. Yeah. yeah, but I really like how you describe, you know, setting the boundary or just asking for what you need, which might be kind of unusual in a relationship or a friendship, right? It's hard to but ask for what we need. Friendship, you know, is should, should <laughs> be a practice of being able to kind of assert your needs in a safe place, and that person should be able should. Should, it's a little <laughs> that we can I feel like receive we're that, right? <laughs> Isn't it funny how even in this conversation, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say it. Like yeah. even we're tiptoeing around, you know, you know, this how people how it's gonna come across to other people that are listening yes. to us and they're oh going, gosh. Oh my gosh, they're gonna set boundaries on their friends. Yes, if you've got a friend who is not respecting your time, your energy. What you have to give, set a boundary, or if, and if they can't respect that, is this somebody you need in your life, mm -hmm. right? 
I mean, sometimes it's time to really take a hardcore evaluation of the people that are in our uh, circle and look at who are the people that give us energy and who yeah. are the people that suck us dry. And well, and who are the people that demonstrate friendship in a way that's meaningful to you? Right. Right. And and we don't have to black hole these people. Like it can just be like, you know, I'm going to actually just shift. I'm going to lean in a different direction. Right. You know, it yeah. doesn't have to be a harsh, it, nothing. Just like sort of like focus towards the people that it's working with or that you want to generate more friendship with or a deeper friendship. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And in some cases, it might be a conversation to say how you've been feeling and what's going on and if this could you know expectation could be met then this friendship could work more smoothly yeah yeah I mean you can give credit to the idea that they might not even realize what they're doing right yeah. like you know I just said you know look at the people who give you energy versus suck your energy but you should probably also give some thought at the people who give you energy are you sucking it from them Mm -hmm. And make sure that you're not, oh, I feel so great after I've been with this person, but do they? Yeah. Make sure. I was going to, is yeah. that in the blog? Am I imagining that that's in no, your blog I also? Said, yeah. It's the reciprocal, right? Yeah. Um, are we being a good friend? Right. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes yeah. it's hard to look at our own, you know, um, mm -hmm. what we're giving or taking, right? Yeah. In a relationship. And are we being fair? Are we being perceived by our friend the way that we think we're being perceived, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, are we watching their body language? Are we aware of our surroundings? And that's all part of being intentional is, is intentionality is really being aware uh, and you work on being aware of pretty much all aspects of your life, right? You kind of stop doing the the autopilot, you know, well, this is the friend I get together with. This is what we always do. This is what we always talk about. This is our pattern. Is it a good pattern? Is it yeah. a healthy pattern? Is it, you know, like some people yeah. are feeling obligated to do whatever and mm -hmm. or maintain certain relationships if you're feeling obligated to spend time just with somebody you don't want to be spending time with that person obligation should not be part of it sometimes I can say as an introvert I'm obligated to leave my house once in a while and go <laughs> see people yeah but but that but I, do enjoy, part of but, awareness, I do, right? but I because, do enjoy yeah. the people I am hanging around with, right? Like I do, you yeah. know, I'm more than happy to make the plans. It, I find as an introvert, it's hard to make that transition to leave the house. Once I'm out, I'm fine. Put the shoes on, open the door, you'll be fine, you know, and it's all yeah. good. But but yeah. it has so part a, of the awareness as an introvert for me is to know that I'm always going to have a feeling of like, I don't want to right before, yeah. you know, <laughs> right with before. everybody, yeah. even the people I love yeah. so much. But yeah. um, I can tell the difference between that one. And that's you right. Know, you you can tell when it's a, when it's a, that's part of the you thing, you know, where yeah. I know I'll feel fine once I, once yeah. I go, you know, yeah. I mean, you know. And uh, it's a self-talk thing too, right? Because yes. I'll say, I'll think. Okay, but, you know, remember, you're going to spend time with that person that you love to spend time with. And it gets yeah. me over the little introvert hump of like, but I don't want to get dressed and go outside. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, uh, and it, so it's like rechecking my little mental tape there. That's what's right. happening. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Um, I think you're right. I think at some point we'll have to revisit this conversation and with a, <laughs> with an extra extroverted person with us. <laughs> yeah. I'll be like, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know I have extroverted friends. I do. Mm -hmm. And and I know that they are the complete opposite, right? They get their energy from being with other people. The thought of staying home alone, they, you know, is like like, like torture. And, you know, they want to know when their next <laughs> outing is and when who they're seeing and how long they get to spend. And 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 I know yeah. they get energy from that. And I, I love hanging out with them, you know, you know, and their, and their very outwardness and, and all that. But, um, 
<clears throat> yeah, it's it's a lot sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. Because they they are so excited to be out doing all these things. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I've also had people tell me there's no way I'm an introvert. And it's like, Same. well, I yeah. absolutely am. But um sometimes what people don't realize is the definitions of the introvert extrovert is that an introvert re-energizes in alone time and downtime Mm -hmm. and an extrovert re-energizes by connecting with other people Mm -hmm. so you can have an introvert that's very chatty and very outworldly and outgoing and you know able to stick out in a crowd they don't all have to be you know the little shy wallflower yeah right that's kind of a stereotype Mm -hmm. um and I know the more comfortable I am with the people I'm with, certainly the more animated I can be or the more, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, talkative I can be and whatnot. Um, so it, I, it doesn't matter that part, how they are when they're out and about is almost irrelevant because whether you're an introvert or extrovert comes down to how do you recharge and an mm-hmm. introvert needs that downtime that alone time the thought of leaving the house is kind of that hump you know and yeah um, yeah. so yeah I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to hear it here but we have thunder just starting oh I didn't hear it I might have uh three dogs climbing my legs (laughs) here shortly here they come (laughs) here they come I do have to pick one up one second okay that's a little (laughs) sorry (laughs) well I'm just gonna say um like this is such an important topic for me because it depends at different phases of seasons of your life um what kind of relationships you're looking for um and I've just noticed in recent years that it's been really helpful for me to and you know getting over burnout phases and being too busy and that kind of thing it's so helpful and makes me so happy to focus and nurture certain relationships, particularly with other women, um, like really focusing in on a few that are really reciprocal or really vibing. Um, and I make a lot more of a point to spend time with those people now. Yeah. And it becomes easier to say no or to sort of mentally pass on, you know, getting involved in some new friendships and relationships that I just not because I don't want to, but because either I'm doing it because I old habit, just want to connect with everyone and be friends, you know, right. but also don't have the, I don't have the time to be a good friend to many more people. Right. Yeah. And so this whole podcast topic is being intentional with our time and our energy and, um, And I have things that I want to devote high quality focus and time and energy to. And I have relationships that I want to do that with. And I just want to keep the number manageable. You know, my family, some really important friends and, and then some fun social stuff. Sure. But when it comes to like, who am I going to see, you know, this month of July or something, I have found that I'm better now. It's, well, I'm trying to practice really setting time to see the people I really care about. And that's one of the questions I'm going to ask now is sort of relating back to your blog, which is how do we bring quality to these relationships? Um, How do we bring it? But I've noticed I feel really good when I commit some time to a friend or a friend group and I show up. Yeah. And it nurtures that those relationships and that deepens our friendship. And that's more of my focus now, rather than making sure I try to get out to everything and everyone, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, I find recently, um, and again, also coming out of that, you know, burnout recovery and, you know, it's also the COVID lockdowns, right? Lots of that yeah. taught us lots because we were all isolated for so long, you know, mm-hmm. lots of relationships changed as the restrictions lifted. And it almost was like repracticing 
how to leave your house and how to meet people. It was all very strange at the, at the beginning. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think we're all still maybe in a little bit of that redeveloping those, those friendship muscles and habits because we lost touch with a lot of people during that time and um you know are mm-hmm. choosing to reconnect or not right mm-hmm. kind of gave us I think it was kind of yeah an opportunity to audit right yeah um yeah because it wasn't just you couldn't just go and see whoever anytime it was like yeah. oh I need to focus on how I'm gonna see these people that are yeah. important to me and one yeah. of the things that I'm uh, find I'm kind of gravitating towards is trying to think of kind of new things to do with the people that I do hang around with you know if we're oh, gonna that's go, a great topic yeah you know if we're gonna go um for lunch and a walk is there a new place we can walk is there mm-hmm. a new restaurant that we want to try mm-hmm. for something different you know um I, I my husband is not really one for going to the beach you know he's not a beach guy and so I've been kind of trying to think of friends uh, where can I get a beach day in with with somebody who wants to to go hang out at the beach and these are kind of things too with being recent empty nesters and then with COVID not really going out and doing stuff you know it's kind of like I'm used to going to the beach with a bunch of kids and yeah. now I'm just looking for a friend to go and let's go relax on the beach and visit and float around in the water a little bit and enjoy a day out in the sun. Um, yeah. And so finding the friend who also wants to do that, right? Yeah. And yeah. and kind of navigating that. But, you know, it's, I find right now I'm really doing a lot of thinking outside the box. Like, um you know, even with, with my husband, we started a date a month, right? And it always has to be something different. You know, we go out a lot. I mean, we, we could consider us dating all the time. It's just the two of us here. But yeah, but there are very specific dates that we um, kind of consider one date a month where we do something completely different and new that we really mm-hmm. haven't necessarily done before. Right. Yeah. You've told me about that. And I think that's so cool for yeah. anyone listening to hear. Like, yeah, it, the the special date is the like doing something new. Can I get out of the box? And yeah, yeah. we look for, for something. And and even if it's like, you know, I came up with this idea recently and he was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. That sounds a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, are, are you, you going to really? tell us what it is? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I can tell you what it is. No. Um, it, you know, those. Um, Oh, now I forgot the word. Uh, those float, uh, sensory oh, depri- sensory yeah. deprivation float yeah. tanks. Yeah, and so we were driving and passed by one, and uh, I was like, "Oh, there's one," because I knew one close shut down during COVID, and I I hadn't seen another when we drove by. And I said, "Hey, that's what that is. We should go try that." And he was like, "Oh, I don't know about that," you know. Yeah, but yeah, he's like, okay, we'll try it once. You know, it's a date thing. Why not? We'll go try yeah. it once. So we'll see. Yeah. So I'll let you know how that goes. Uh, Do you float right in the here. same tank with your date? You can. Yeah. There's, yeah. They have the option for that. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so <laughs> like, yeah. I want to go on a date with you in the tank. <laughs> a sensory deprivation tank. <laughs> uh, are you sure you even want to spend time with me? <laughs> Oh, if you have friends that you don't feel like good spending time with, go to the sensory deprivation tank and then you don't have to spend any time with them. Oh gosh. Okay, so, but a lot of your blog was how do we bring quality to relationships? And I, I think this is like such a rich and thoughtful topic because I admit that I can be and was a person you just take those relationships for granted, right? You're friends with the people from high school or from that that group or this. And you don't think about what am I bringing to this relationship? How are we deepening it? Um, how is it a high quality relationship for me that is reciprocal? And your blog does talk about that. And I think it's really, it. let's just kind of reiterate what's in there because it's helpful. I think some of the things I've been trying, as I mentioned, is to actually just book time with the people I care about um, and and showing up for that time, trying not to flake or cancel. 
Um, and it feels good to commit that time, even for me, um, because I used to sort of ha- semi commit, but I might do something else. And, you know, and then I'm not feeling that grounded either. But if I know, yeah. okay, Sunday night, we're doing that with someone I like something we both like to do. Um, that's very settling and grounding for me. I know my energy is going somewhere important. And I try to hold that um, space. And another one that comes to mind when we're, you're kind of reading through the blog is like caring about those people. <laughs> yeah. And I laugh, but it's like checking in, like understanding, thinking about what's going on in their life. Maybe, you know, they had an appointment, an important appointment during the week. How did it go? Are you feeling okay? Do you want to talk about it? You know, and just checking in, trying to think about their lives and care about them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, sometimes it's hard because people in general are self-centered, right? Like we're, we generally are thinking about ourselves and which is, you know, that funny thing when you worry about what everybody thinks when you're walking down the street, nobody's looking, you know, they're, yeah. they're yeah. not looking, everybody's concerned about themselves. And so to kind of be conscious of that, right. And when somebody else crosses my mind, I've kind of got in the habit of not saying, oh, I should text them later to see how they're doing. I will do it right yes. now. Yes. Just do, it. do send it. it. Send the it text. This is going to take me 15 seconds to open my phone, send a message, just says, mm-hmm. hey, I was just thinking about you, you know, hope you're having a mm-hmm. good day or how's it going? It's been a while since we chatted or whatever. And yeah. then knowing that that's going to start a conversation, you know, and so, um, so you kind of have to be aware of what you're doing in the moment. Like, you know, there's sometimes moments that that doesn't work, but, um, you know, when you're trying to focus on, on something, but who knows, they might not get back to you for two hours, right? Yeah. Because it's a text yeah. message and it's a convenience thing. So you get back mm-hmm. to people when you get back to people, um, and nothing says that they can't respond to you. And then you're busy for half an hour. You'll, and then you'll get back to that message in a little bit. You know, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. That's the beauty of a text is it's not, it doesn't have to be instant. If somebody expects you to respond instantly, they don't understand how text works, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, text is one of those convenience things. We'll get back to you as soon as I can. Mm-hmm. Um, but sending that message in the moment when you think of it, because you won't think of it later, right? I yeah. mean, how often does it happen where... It's like, oh, I have to message this person, but I'm not at home right now. You know, I have to do this. Oh, but I'm not at home right now, or I'm not here. I'm not there. You don't think of it at the right time. And so it sits and sits. Just even if you have to send yourself a, a message, you know, I put stuff in my calendar just as a reminder so that when I, I do get home later and I do have the time, I've at least intentionally given myself that reminder that I wanted to do something, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's being more thoughtful about what's happening in the lives of the people around you, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, keeping in mind that somebody might be dealing with a friend who's, got a got cancer Mm -hmm. right I don't know that person it doesn't affect me at all yeah Yeah. but it's affecting my friend and so to keep that in mind that my friend is dealing with some upsetting news in her life Mm -hmm. and so to just check in you -hmm. know just remember oh yeah I should just see how she's doing you yeah, know? not for me, for them. For them. For the it's friend not... that you care about. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, me wanting to go to the beach, that's about me. That's about me mm-hmm. finding somebody that wants to do something, you know, with me but that both, I want to do. But you're both going right? to have fun doing it. Yeah. Yeah. But there's also times where you have to think about what other people are going through. And that's hard. That actually takes a lot of effort to keep other people's news <laughs> in mind because it doesn't affect us right like yeah you know and so sometimes 
it's hard and it takes practice to mm -hmm. keep in mind, you know, that, mm -hmm. that something might affect somebody. Um, I'm not sure if you're, <clears throat> I'm going to mention this. Um, uh, let me know if you're if not okay, but I mean, there was recently that really bad accident that happened here in Manitoba and, um, you know, several people died in that accident and it was very tragic and it took me a couple of days but I remember suddenly I was like, oh my gosh. And I sent you a message because I realized that these people were from your hometown that you grew up, not in the town you live in now, but mm -hmm. through past conversation, you mentioned you grew up. And I thought you could, have, it's a small town. You could have known some of those. People, yeah, that was really right? nice. Yeah. And it was like, oh my gosh. So I stopped right then and there. I have to send her a message because I didn't put two and two together right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when I did... I thought I have to reach out and find out if you're okay because, you know, or people in your family or, or whatnot, right? Because this yeah, could yeah. be affecting you and I hadn't thought of it right away. Yeah. Right? So it's just when to, when you kind of put some information together, it doesn't have to be in the moment. It doesn't have to be exactly when it happened. It can be later, mm -hmm. but it's the thought that you thought. Yes. Of it. And, and I'll, that's reach a good out. example, right? So, um, and my family was not directly affected by that but okay. the, of course the community was yeah but I just want to say that for anyone listening yeah. um but your message was great because I remember it said like you just acknowledged like oh I I just put this together you know so there's no hard feelings about saying something like that right oh I'm three days late for your birthday but I'm thinking about you you know just like it's okay to say what's real and still send the message, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes the person feel like they're known, right? Like they're seen or like, you know, something about me. And so you sent the message. Um, and that's nice. That's what deepening friendships are, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it also shows listening, mm -hmm. you know, in the conversation, right. Mm -hmm. And, and paying attention. And it's that, quality relationship Suzanne and I had to take a little uh dog barking thunder break <laughs> there so now we're we're just finding our feet I think it's as adults it's an interesting topic making and keeping friends that feel good to you and um maybe editing some relationships that are feeling like obligation or that don't feel that great and this conversation could really go on. I'd be curious to hear from you, the listeners, about, you know, how it is for you, because I, I think it's something that's going to resonate with a lot of people. And how have you done with being intentional in your friendships? Um, or how are you feeling about that right now? Maybe there's been a life phase change or a season change for you. Um, you know, whether you're a new empty nester or, a, you know, an older person or, you know, a young family, or you're set out on your own for the first time, and you've moved to a new place, and you're reestablishing new friendships. Yeah. So if you have any thoughts on that, um, drop it in the podcast reviews or below, you know, any yeah. of our posts uh, on this topic. Email us at destinationsimple.podcast at gmail.com. And we're more than happy to uh, get your emails and we'll, you know, discuss um, the you're if you've got questions or comments we're more than happy to discuss them during our podcast mm -hmm. in future recordings <clears throat> yeah so um so I guess just to kind of sum up a little bit um you know what we're really the message we're really trying to get across is just bringing quality to the relationships that you have if you're in autopilot with your relationships, your friendships, you're just kind of going through the motions because this is what you've always done. This is what you think is expected of you, you know, and it's not, it's not working for you. You're not feeling energized. You're not feeling um, like your cup is getting filled, you know, from the connections that you have with others. It's time to take a really hard look at what you're bringing to the relationship is there areas that you need to give attention to right because this is a friendships are a two-way street right and sometimes it's you that has to make some adjustment 
but you can also look at it from how do you feel when you're with the other person and do you need to set some boundaries? You can't change that person, right? You can have a conversation with them. You can have a chat with them about things that are bothering you and there's things you can work on, but you can't actually change that person. So the only thing you can do is change your own behavior and set boundaries. Mm -hmm. And if they're not respecting those boundaries, then that's a clue right? That's a clue that that's not a healthy relationship for you. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's really taking a, an intentional look at the relationships you have in your life. And you want, you want the relationships that make you feel good. You want the relationships that, you know, are energizing, that make you laugh, that you have a good time, that you create memories with, you know, those are, mm -hmm. those are the relationships that you're going to want to invest your time our time is valuable you know so mm -hmm. choose how you spend it wisely with people that you really want to spend your time with yes yeah that's a perfect summary yeah yeah so thanks Good. for listening everybody remember to subscribe and uh to destination simple wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss an episode uh, email us again. It's destination simple dot podcast at gmail dot com. We would love to hear from you and your comments and questions. If you have an area in your life that you want to know more about, how you can be more intentional, how you can simplify it, uh, ask away. We're more than happy to uh, discuss it. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Suzanne, for another great conversation. Yeah. Have a great day, everybody.